What up, everyone? Big Kev back in the building. Today, we've got another video on rugby. After watching the first video on the biggest hits and having no idea what was going on, I decided to actually do one on the rules of uh, rugby and to get a little more explanation what the game is about and how it works. So this one is uh, called, this one's called Rugby for Beginners, a guide to the rules of rugby union. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's check it out. Rugby is one of England's most popular sports and is played by people of all ages, shapes and sizes, male and female. This animation teaches you about the main laws of rugby so you can have more fun watching or playing this great game. You play rugby in a jersey, shorts and boots with studs and you wear a mouth guard to protect your teeth. The ball is an oval shape. It's crazy that really their only form of protection is a mouth guard. No, like, pads or helmets or any other kind of uh, protective gear. ...and looks a bit like an egg. Because rugby originated in England, there are a lot of English expressions. There are two versions of rugby. Rugby Union okay. and Rugby League. This film is about Rugby Union, the most popular version of rugby around the world. The rugby pitch is about the same size as a football pitch. On the pitch, there are a number of lines. We start from the halfway line. From this line, the game is started or restarted after a score. Next is the 10 meter line. After the kickoff, the ball must cross this line. Then there is the 22 meter line. Next is the try line. Behind this line, you can score a try by touching the ball down. On the try line are the rugby posts, two vertical posts and a crossbar. The last line is the dead ball line and marks the end of the field. On the sides, you find the 5 meters line and the 15 meters line. Well, there's a During lot of, a line out, the player... There's, there's a lot of different lines in rugby. ...players must stay between these lines. A game is two halves of 40 minutes and has a half-time break of about 10 minutes. A rugby team has 15 players. Eight of them are called the forwards. These guys form the scrum and line-out and do the more heavy work. Next, you have seven players called the backs and they do most of the fast running. The scrum half connects the forwards and the backs. The last man is the full back. You play rugby with your hands and feet. It's crazy that there's 15 players per team on the field, so 30 players in total at all times, especially considering that it feels like they're, you know, all going after each other. Most of the time you carry the ball in your hands, but rugby is a team sport, so you pass the ball to your teammates. When you pass, you are only allowed to pass backwards. Okay, I did not, did not realize that from watching the video. That makes sense. You do this mainly by an underhand throw across the body. But if you wish to, you can pass overhand too. You may pass as much as you want. If you decide to kick the ball, you may do so, usually to gain territory. There are several ways to score points. The most important way is to score a try. You score a try when you place the ball on the ground, on or behind the try line of your opposition. The result is five points. Because you scored a try, your team may also attempt to kick the ball from the ground, but it must carry between the posts and above the crossbar. This is called a conversion and awards your team an extra two points so together, you score seven points. So very close to American football, where a touchdown would be six and an extra point would be one. Should the referee award you a penalty kick, your team can choose to restart the game, kick for a line out, or kick the ball between the posts. If you kick between the posts and score, you get three points. You can also get points at any time during the game by scoring a... Okay, so there's also penalty kicks. I wonder how you get those. Drop goal, 
when you intentionally drop the ball in front of you and kick it immediately after it hits the ground. As with a conversion and penalty, it must travel between the posts. This also wins your team three points. Suppose you throw the ball forwards or you drop the ball and it bounces forward. In both cases, the referee will decide that a scrum must be formed. So a scrum is a reset. So basically you can't have any forward passes and even if you drop the ball and it goes forward, then play a stop. Now if you drop it and it goes backwards, that would be allowed, I'm assuming? Start after a foul where the ball travels forward from the hand. The forwards of both teams set in a specific formation and set against each other, like you can see in this view from above. Wow. Next, the scrum half will roll the ball straight into the middle of the scrum, and both teams are allowed to contest for the ball by pushing and using their feet after the ball has entered the scrum to move the ball backwards. While the ball is in the scrum, you are not allowed to touch it with your hands. When the ball okay. comes out of the scrum, it is usually the scrum half who will pass it to one of the waiting players, and the next attack will start. That's wild. I wonder how they decided, like, who invented that in the first place? That's a, that's a crazy method for determining who gets the, who gets the ball. I mean, uh, pretty inventive, though. If the ball leaves the field of play because it's kicked out or because a player with the ball is tackled and falls across the touchline, or the foot of a player who is holding the ball touches the touchline, the game will be restarted with a line-out. To form a line-out, the forwards of both teams will stand in separate lines between the 5 and 15 metre lines. Next, the ball will be thrown straight in between the two lines by the team in possession. The player, who can jump the highest, and he may be lifted by his teammates, may catch the ball or tap it to his scrum half. With this ball possession, they can start to attack again. This one's, this one's a little wild. It's not like they don't restart it with another scrum. It's kind of like in basketball where you're like tossing it in, but instead of just tossing it into your guy, it's kind of like an up-for-grabs scenario. I mean, are they allowed to like hit each other at this point is this like this seems like this could be like a really chippy area for the guys to attack one another you know when they're going up for the ball well it seems like they didn't relatively uh, contact free there the unique thing about rugby is that you can stop players by tackling but can only tackle a player who is in possession of the ball you're only allowed to use your hands, arms, and body. You can grab the man with the ball everywhere except his neck and head. You are not allowed to kick him or tackle him while he's in the air. If you do, the referee will send you off the field immediately by issuing a yellow or red card. The most common okay, so they have yellow and red cards like soccer. Though. Way to tackle is using the shoulder and arms, targeting an opposition player below the waist, so he falls to the ground. Fucking During the game, you will often see two situations: a ruck and more. But what are these? No idea. Suppose a player carrying the ball makes contact with a player who wants to tackle him. But instead of falling on the ground, they keep standing up. Immediately, teammates of both teams will join this formation to compete for the ball, which will be somewhere in the middle. This formation is called a maul. 
That's a, that's a good term because that sounds like it could get pretty violent pretty quickly. The man with the ball will try to turn his back to his opponents and make the ball available for his teammates. If a maul takes too long, the referee will award a scrum in favour of the team moving forward. A ruck is formed after the man with the ball is tackled and the players fall on the ground. During this situation, two very important rules come into play. The man who made the tackle must let go of the tackled player, and the man who is tackled must release the ball immediately. Players of both teams will bind as a unit with each other over the ball group and compete to win the ball with their feet and pushing back the opposing players. Do they do that while the guy is still underneath? If they're, are they competing their, with their feet while that dude is still at their feet, getting pummeled the whole time? Or is he allowed to, like, escape first? Couldn't really tell there. There are several ways to be offside. One of the most common ways is during a maul when players are competing to get possession of the ball or to stop them all being driven towards the try line. The offside line starts at the heel of the foot of the last person in the mall and runs across the field from touchline to touchline. No one can enter the mall unless they do so from behind that player's foot. Though rugby is a physical and sometimes tough sport, a rugby player always respects his opponent and the referee. Whatever the referee decides, you will never contest their decision or risk being penalised. After every game, you pay your respects to your opponents and the referee by applauding them when they leave the field. Respect and sportsmanship are two of the most important values of rugby union. Hopefully, with this explanation, you will enjoy watching rugby even more. All right, so uh, this video definitely helped explain some of the basics for sure. Like, I had no idea what the rules were. I didn't know how you scored. I didn't know what the point system was. I didn't know what any of the terms were. So this de this definitely gave me a very good baseline to go forward with. I'm definitely more of a visual learner, so I definitely need to see some more examples of the rucks and malls and the scrums to really get more of a feel for it. So I'm going to have to, like, Look for some other videos uh, where they're actually more than like a three second clip of them doing it to actually get a better feel of like how it all gels and works together, especially with some of like the the um, the offsides and stuff like that. I mean, you got to really see that stuff a bunch of times before it really starts to sink in, at least at least for me. Also, they said this is one of the two main forms of rugby, rugby union. And then there was another one called Rugby League. I don't know how popular Rugby League is. They said this one was the more popular version or uh, how different uh, they are. So if anyone knows if I should also be looking at Rugby League or just stick to the rules of Rugby Union, uh, that'd be great. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so until next time, have a good one.